Good morning, welcome back to another video and today we are going to be going over the five rare mounts that you can farm pretty much non-stop. Now just stick around and enjoy the video. Okay, so coming in at number one, we have the Death Charges Reigns. Now this one drops at a 0.8% drop chance, and this one drops from Lord Arius Rivendare. Not Baron Rivendare anymore, obviously it got a revamp. But that being the case guys, all you have to do is go into Stratholme. Now one thing of note when you're actually doing Stratholme is you have two instances you can actually go into. Now that being the case, what you'll be wanting to do is going in through the service entrance. This is also a really good transmog farm if you really wanted to know. And also another thing of note that you'll be wanting to do is going over to all of the ziggurats before you can actually get to Lord Arius Rivendare. Now, all you have to do is just run over to the ziggurat, kill the boss at the front, and then go in and kill all of the acolytes within the necrop inside the ziggurat. Once they have been destroyed, all you have to do is move over to the next one, and so on and so forth. Once you've actually got to the end, the gates will have opened for you, and all you have to do is do a little mini boss type thing where you just kill two waves, which is one boss, a load of mobs, and then you can get to Lord Arius Rivendare. After that, all you have to do is take out Rivendare and then and then see if you can actually get the mount. Now, bearing in mind, you can do this 10 times per hour, but just bear in mind, this is kind of long-winded, so I would recommend actually building a speed set if you are actually going after this mount, as this will increase the amount of times you can try per hour, it's because the more attempts you can get per hour, be the more effective use of your time, because then you can get the mount a bit faster than you usually would. Now, that being the case, at a 0.8% drop chance, it's a very hard mount to get a hold of, but being able to farm this endlessly, but being able to actually farm this mount endlessly is pretty damn awesome. And as an Alliance player myself, I really want this mount because who doesn't want to ride an undead horse if you are an Alliance character? It just is awesome, right? That being the case, guys, that is the Death Charges Reigns at number one. Now, coming in at number one, we have the Reigns of the Vitreous Stone Drake. Now, this one comes from Slab Hide in the Stone Core, and what you can actually do is set this to normal mode, as basically you can do this on heroic, but remember that will lock you for the day. If you change it to normal, however, it is at a you can do this endlessly. In the Stone Core, the the actual mount drops off a of slab hide, which is at a 0.8% drop chance, such as like the Baron Rivendare mount, but is a lot easier to farm up endlessly. This is because he is the second boss within this dungeon, and there is also a teleporter once you've actually taken out the boss, which will take you back to the beginning again, in which you can just jump out, reset the instance, and go back in. You can actually get yourself locked out for the 10 runs pretty damn sharpish if you are using a speed set or you're running it with a druid, a rogue, or a demon hunter, as those ones have a lot more mobility than most other classes. So that's one thing you may want to bear in mind if you're going to do this endlessly. Try and do it on a class that you can do it a lot faster with, such as like with transmog farming, just go with anything that is super fast and effective. So maybe actually make one character dedicated for non-stop farming, and that would actually aid you quite well. And if you're a gold farmer who actually watches most of my other stuff, then just use your transmog dungeon or raid farming character and just do that endlessly. Now, that being the case, guys, at a 0.8% drop chance, it has a pretty relatively low drop chance in order to actually get hold of this mount, but overall, the mount actually looks pretty damn awesome once you actually have it. Now, that being the case, it will take you quite a lot of attempts. I believe. Now, this one actually took me quite a long time to get a hold of. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It took forever and a day, but finally I got it from Slab Hide. And overall, getting locked is not a problem because that means you're maximizing the amount of time. And in, if you are on like a druid and while doing that, you can just farm up herbs in, the, in deep home while you're waiting for all of the, waiting for the lockout to reset, which is kind of handy because then you make gold as well as farming up the actual mount. So that's another thing you may want to bear in mind. Coming in at number three, we have the Reigns of the Drake of the North Winds. Now this one actually dropped from Altrius in the 
Vortex Pinnacle. This one actually drops from this boss at a 0.9% drop chance. Now, this one actually takes quite a long time to, in order to do, but there are some nice ways in order to make it less annoying, so to speak. When you're actually running through the Vortex Pinnacle for this mount, obviously you can do this endlessly, as this is an endless farming list. Now, that being the case, once you defeat Ultrius, all you have to do is jump off the platform, and it will actually, like, take you back to the beginning of the dungeon, which you then you can then jump out and reset and then go back in again. This makes it a lot easier in order to farm up and you can also farm a great deal of volatile air while you're doing this so as a side note to make a little bit of extra gold while you're actually farming up this mount. So it's a great way in order to make a decent amount of gold just by doing some regular farming overall. Now that being the case guys, that does drop at a 0.9% drop chance, so a little bit more than the Vitry of Stone Drake and the Reigns of the Death Chart and the Death Charger's Reigns, so bear that one in mind that this one is a little bit higher on the drop chance list, but it will take you quite a, a while in order to get a hold of it, it isn't instant I've got it, it's, it's, uh, it's still going to take you quite a while. But um, other than that guys, that is the Reigns of the Drake of the North Winds at number 3. Now coming in at number 4 we have the Honeyback Harvester. Now this is a mount that you can actually farm endlessly to a point. Now this one is an Alliance only farm and this requires you to get exalted with the Honeyback Hive. Now this one requires you to at least have the Battle Pet Bumbles or the Sea Breeze Bumblebee which you can buy the Sea Breeze Bumblebee off of the auction house for a decent amount of gold, but don't worry, you'll be making that gold back for what you'll be about to do. Now, that being the case, all you have to do is make your way over to Barry to begin the actual quest in Stormsong Valley. He is located here on the map right now. Now, what you're going to be wanting to do is by doing the quest line and getting yourself up to exalted status with the Honeyback Hive. Once you've actually reached exalted status with the Honeyback Hive, you will be given your Honeyback Harvester. This is because you will be giving in a load of royal jelly in order to level up your little bumblebee that you've been caring for ever since you ended the, the initial quest line. Now, that being the case, this is endless because you'll be farming up royal jelly and that will be flying around the entirety of Stormsong Valley, picking up loads of jelly. One little side note is, once you actually hit Revered, all you have to do is buy the goggles with a few bits of jelly, I believe it's 20 rich jelly, and all of the nodes will actually pop up on your screen, such as you would with mining and herbalism. Now, obviously, I have a route for this, and this time I've actually left this one in the description. Now, all you have to do is import this using roots import and export, and it should pop up on your screen right now. Now, and now endlessly farming up jelly in order to get your reputation up is not is nothing new, so be prepared that this is a pretty much a non-stop thing until you've reached Exalted, but once you've actually re reached Exalted, your Bumblebee will be ready and then you shall have it. Now that being the case guys, let's move on to number 5, which coming in at number 5 is the Terrified Pack Mule. Now this is an endless farm, but it is a massive grind, at a 0.03% drop chance from any of the hex thralled mobs. All you have to do is just take out all of those and just keep endlessly farming. Now there usually is a lot of two times four farms for this particular mount because it can be sold on the auction house for a decent amount of gold. If you have a lot of gold, you might as well just buy it, farm it up however, there is a great farming location which is on the screen right now. This one is usually used for farming up the mount in order to sell in the auction house, but also if you are a mount collector you can also do this one endlessly as well, because you're going to be spending a lot of time there before the actual mount will drop. One little thing that I would recommend when you're actually farming this up is by downloading the add-on rarity as it will tell you how many attempts until you actually got a hold of your terrified pack mule so you'll know how many mobs it's going to take you to actually get a hold of this mount, roughly. Now that being the case, the terrified pack mule is a great mount but it takes quite a long time to drop at a 0.03% drop chance. The only saving grace for this is you're going to be killing loads more mobs than you would by running into a dungeon and taking out one boss. 
So there's that for you there. So just be prepared that this is an open world farm. You, there are usually quite a lot of two times four farms for this actual particular mount. So you shouldn't have a problem overall actually finding your group together and trying to get a hold of this mount overall. Now, if you do decide to actually decide to actually sell it, it's sold from anywhere to around about a token's worth. And that is based off of EU prices, not US, because I know the US price is a little bit lower than ours. Now, that being the case, guys, that is the five rare mounts that you can farm non-stop. Have an awesome rest of the day, and I shall see you in the next video, which will be tomorrow.